Hello, this is Jem from ElevateCode.com and in this tutorial we'll be covering how to delete records from a data set using Link. I'm assuming you already know the basics of VB.NET and are somewhat familiar with working with databases. Let's begin. On our form we will have a data view control that will be populated from an XML file using a data set. We have a list box control that is populated using a link distinct keyword query on the data set. If we select forward in the list box control and hit the delete button, it will remove all of the cars with the forward make from the XML file, and since the data grid view is coming from the XML file, it will be removed from there as well. When I restart the program, you can see these changes have stayed the same because the data is coming from the XML file. You can see that the forward make no longer exists in the data view control. Now I will stop the program and explain the code. We import system.io, which is used for creating the directory and files. In the form load event, I only call the initialized data sub routine. Then environment.getFolderPath method returns the path to the user's personal folder, which is my documents. I then concatenate the folder name I want to access. Then I check if the folder exists and create the folder if it does not exist. This same concept is used to create the XML data file. Now let's take a look at what has been created to this point. Select the folder we just created and open it. Now select the XML data file and open it with Notepad. This is a very simple XML file with two fields per record stored as strings. Going back to the code, we see that the data set is populated by calling the readXML method, which is passing in the path and file name. The data grid view is bound to this data set by setting its data source equal to this data set. The data member must be set to the active table. Just as a reminder, this is the data grid control on our form. Now I will explain the link query. The link query returns I a numeral of T type. The letter P is a temporary variable used by link. The data set only has one table, so I can pass in the index of the table. Alternatively, we could also pass in the name of the table. The select keyword needs the field type and name that it is performing the distinct function on. Once the query is returned, we can enumerate it, adding the results to the list box. When a make is selected in the list box, we will enable the delete button. We need to create a data row variable to force the type inference from the link query. The link query is similar to the previous query, but this time I pass in the table name. The toArray function will return an array of data rows that meet the criteria in the select statement. We can enumerate the rows, removing the records from the dataset by passing in each row to the remove method. I've created a kill button just to show you what happens when there is no existing file. Let's run the program and delete the data file. The next time the program is started, it will create a new XML data file. Notice the forward make we deleted earlier is restored to the data set because we just created this new one. The data function is called only to create the initial XML document. Let's expand the XML document for review. The XML document has no schema at this point, only the header to let VB.NET know it's an XML file and the default data. We use the xDocumentSave method to create this initial data file. Finally, we'll look at how the data is saved in the form closing event. Each time the form closes, it will accept any changes to the XML document, so that the next time we open the program, the data will still have any changes that we have made to it. We then tell the data set to write the XML file using the write schema flag. And that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below the video. And if you like this video, feel free to subscribe. We've got more videos coming your way.